So thank you, Deirdre, for inviting me for this wonderful conference. And I must say, I think we have, with all the initiatives that have been going on around the topic of maternal thinking and uh, the practice of being an artist, um, I can say, I just propose it, that we are dealing with a shift in a paradigm. I really feel it that way, and I don't only feel it. I, I, when I look at all the initiatives and when I look through the readings also at the new books that just arrived and are laying on this table, then I think we are having a, sh a paradigm shift. And when we recall the remark of Julia Kristeva, and I really thought when I read about this remark that she had done this remark in the 80s, but no, she had done it only like uh, eight years ago. She said, we are the first civilization that lacks a discourse on the complexity of motherhood. When I read that sentence, I thought, wow, all these initiatives about asking the question, what does maternal thinking mean to being an artist? is adding to this complex discourse and the complexity, probably, of motherhood. I'm a curator. I work in a museum in Arnhem. Um, I speak later, maybe during dinner, about some projects I did. But first, I would like, for now, I would like to propose sorry, some examples of artists showing you how they dealt with being an artist and being uh, a mother. And uh, the whole topic, of course, has not been put forward in a very, how should I say, not only in ideal terms. And, of course, we have to do with a shift also in the thinking of motherhood from the 60s and 70s, where it was m mostly based on how to prevent to becoming a mother, into the free choice of whether do I want to be or become or become not a mother or have a child. But for now, I would say we, this shift in paradigm is really about going from a situation where um, there is being a denial of a reproductive difference and a dominant attitude in art schools, in the art world, in art criticism, uh, the dominance of the idea of the artist as a, an unattached, disengaged, or an autonomous person, or from the persistent view in a gallery world that once a woman artist becomes a mother, her work will lose its market value and the prospect of a future career is diminishing. I'm not making this up. I was confronted with these remarks. I am confronted with these remarks when I go visit galleries. But from this situation, I think we move to a, another situation, to a new generation of women artists and a new approach, a rebellious approach, I think, to the, 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 the very important question, what does or how does motherhood or maternal thinking influence uh, being an artist? And that means also that you don't want to embrace the hermeticism of previous generations and that you... Um, can also show or practice how art and uh, having a family and raising a family can become one seamless activity. Of course, this sounds very ideal, I know. I, I'm a mother myself. I just show you one picture of uh, Lara Snitker. She makes very large uh, totems, one could say, that occupy space. I found, find this extremely funny. Uh, Saying I want kids somehow is totally taboo in the art world. I just go through all my slides now very quickly because I thought I would have like 40 minutes, but I don't want to eat up all the time for my colleagues coming after me. There have been many, many initiatives now from uh, uh, artists that want to um, uh, represent motherhood in a different way, somehow deal also with ideal uh, the ideal, idealistic representation of motherhood. One of them is Catalina Bosse. I actually have some slides that we have seen uh, in the presentations of our uh, colleagues this morning. 
And she actually is referring to very uh, iconographic uh, traditional themes in art, like the nude in landscape or uh, breastfeeding, but putting it in that way that she really wants to um, make a, a, a change in representing motherhood. Another extreme example is Marnie Kotak, who, uh, who gave birth to her son Ajax uh, a couple of years ago in a gallery. People were invited to in attend the birth. I don't have to think about it, but for her this was a way really to confront the audience with everything of her life. Another example is by the Dutch artist Ine Poppe, who made uh, cheese from uh, mother milk. It was a huge project. She got uh, criticized a lot for it. It was in the mid-80s. And um, um, then another example is Jennifer Wroblewski, who is an artist. And um, once she became a mother, people thought, you know, she would not be... Uh, showing her work anymore, and when she was invited to do a show, she des decided to, to, to organize a group show called Mother Mother. I um, uh, exhibited the work of Lia Porzager, a Danish artist, um, in the uh, group show Female Power I organized uh, two years ago. I brought the catalog, it's only last copy, but I will, uh, you'll be happy to have a look at it. And she did an uh, Anata experiment uh, as a preparation for her installation at the Castle Documenta two years ago. And she um, went through, with a group of uh, female friends, she went to uh, Monte Verita. It's a very famous place where artists uh, got inspired by all kinds of esotericism and spiritualism. And they went through a five days week uh, experience where they went through the mother to be born again. So it was a real spiritual uh, 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 week. And as you can see, she took a female form, the breast form, to, uh, to, to, to emphasize that. I just brought some pictures of very classical uh, images of uh, the mother with a child, in this case, the, within the Christian uh, tradition, this is a very uh, emblematic icon uh, that had to really, at least some historians believe so, the image of the mother uh, giving birth or breastfeeding the baby or simply having a baby, the G Jesus baby, on her lap and uh, playing with it had to deal with the fact that in Christian um, religion uh, there should be more uh, attendance to the normal life of the normal people, uh, so to say. So they used this image of the mother with a child to show how close uh, Christianity is to, is to the people. Another example um, of a woman artist who dealt with her motherhood is Elisabeth Vigée-Lebrun, a French artist. Uh, actually, many uh, women artists have um, painted themselves with their children in earlier age, in earlier uh, centuries. Uh, this is, of course, a very ideal situation, but I have to show some earlier works from the beginning of the 20th century where there are not such ideal situations. This is by Kate Colwich, Brett, it says, 1924, dealing with poverty. Uh, she made also many works dealing with uh, war and also uh, dealing with the fact that many women had to work outside the family home and raise children at the same time. Um, and another example of a German artist is Hannah Nagel, she is, to me, one of the um, first artists who also questioned uh, in Germany the uh, anti-abortion law that was um, uh, uh, instigated in, in the mid-20s uh, in Germany. And she made leaflets and pamphlets against this anti-abortion law. Of course, this all has to do with self-determination. Uh, as you can see, it's all about the workload of being a mother and being an artist at the same time. And this is Hannah Nagel. 
Uh, this is by Lea Kruntig, also showing how hard the work is of women and women artists, uh, um, and how uh, becoming or being a mother is influence, excuse me, influencing uh, your work. Another example I have is Nikki de Saint Val. Of course, she is very famous for her nanas. Uh, her nana, she she describes. You all know these voluptuous women. For her, they were uh, mothers. The new mothers, they were, it, it was like a goddesses. But before she made these colorful, happy, joyous nanas, symbolizing the free woman, the free mother, or the free goddess, she made actually lots of shooting paintings and sculptures. She would put uh, paintings together, um, and... You, you should really look at the details with these paintings because they are stuffed with little baby puppets. It's quite shocking, actually, when you really discover that. And she would shoot at these paintings. And for her, it had a lot to do with the fact um, that she wanted to be a free woman and she wanted to be freed of everything had, that had to do with a certain type of femininity. And shooting and shooting uh, paintings, uh, shoot painting balloons at these objects and paintings was a very important part of her work at the beginning of the 60s. Uh, you see her here uh, shooting at uh, a, a figure that later would become crucifixion. Um, actually, she left her uh, child behind to, to go and live with someone else. And that leaving uh, ha had something ha traumatized somehow her, her life. Uh, we see here then uh, crucifixion, and the top part is then filled also with little baby, uh, little baby dolls. A totally different attitude. That's, this is around the same time we encounter with Léa Lublin. She's also a French artist, and uh, she did a project in 1968. And Léa Lublin wanted to uh, cross the bridge between art and daily life. And when she became a mother, she decided to live with her seven-month seven baby in a museum of uh, modern art in Paris for a couple of weeks. And uh, with that, of course, she wanted really to, to bridge uh, uh, daily life and art, but also to show what it meant to the public. I, for me, this is one of the first examples of uh, artists that really take the public space and put into it what it means bridging this uh, so-called gap between daily life and art. Another example is, of course, uh, my colleagues have mentioned it before, Mirla laderman Ukeles. Um, she uh, became a mother in 1968, and she encountered when she would walk with her, uh, how do you call it, a cradle? No, not a cradle. A cram uh, through the streets, her friends would come up to her and say, well, well, I, we suppose you don't work anymore. Huh? Well, let's have a look at your baby. And she got so angry uh, by that. She decided to write a manifesto in 1969 called the Maintenance uh, or Manifesto Maintenance Art Care. And she worked on this. She had uh, addressed several museums to, to do a project in, in, in museums with this project. And the project actually is to clean everything in the, uh, in the museum to show how the washing and cooking, renewing and preserving, etc., is, uh, is being part of her daily life and has to be um, acknowledged as such, as an artwork. And what she did, she realized it finally in 1973, where she was invited for a show organized by Lucy Lippert in Hartford, Connecticut. And there she would stay then in the museum and um, actually uh, she would demand that the museum closed its doors so everybody who was in there, all visitors who were in there were not allowed to go out and she would start cleaning vitrines, she would start cleaning the floor, she would um, uh, uh, just show what it meant all these daily cleaning activities. Of course, her, um, her uh, activities went much farther. She, uh, you probably know about her maintenance art project where she worked with uh, garbage uh, workers. Uh, it's only one of the examples, but this was done in the 70s. And um, 
she repeated uh, this uh, intervention in museums, I think about six times. Um, uh, this is a, a, an example of a Danish artist, Christine, uh, uh, Kirsten Justesen, where she, for me, really showed what it meant uh, to be uh, um, or to combine motherhood with artists. She called it a class struggle. Her children are, are playing on the table, uh, and in the meanwhile, she is reading and cleaning the house and trying to save time to make her art. Other examples of that uh, are that of uh, Birgit Jurgensen, an Austrian artist who passed away 10 years ago. Um, of course, this is all somehow uh, bound in from in the negative uh, point of view, uh, which was very common in the 70s, actually, to uh, see motherhood as something that would keep you away from a real other career as an artist. And somehow the, the, the women house in the beginning of the 70s in LA really dealt with these issues. And I think um, um, it has been a very, very important intervention. Just to show you some other examples of artists who dealt with motherhood and gener di different generation, I show you the work of uh, female artist, Dutch female artist Charlie Turop, who is depicting here um, her, uh, you see it at the sculpture on the left side, that's uh, uh, a sculpture of her father who was a visual artist, Jan Turop. To her right is her son, John Fernhout, who also became an artist, and she herself painting the three of them, putting herself in a tradition of an artistic family, but also uh, emphasizing her own uh, art, being an artist and being part of this generation and contributing to this generation of artists. Another famous uh, um, uh, example is, of course, Paula Modersohn Becker, who painted herself uh, pregnant. Actually, she, she was not pregnant when she painted this painting. Uh, many people have thought so. But um, uh, somehow she is pointing out at being pregnant. Another example of the 60s is by the Dutch artist Verdi, Verdi Tajiri. She made Womtomp. It's a huge sculpture by uh, fur, with fur, artificial fur. And the idea is you can see it's a vagina on top and you're supposed to slide into it or come out of it like this. Here she is with her two sons, uh, daughters, sorry. And uh, this was a very... Uh, uh, how should you say, very, it's called Horty Sculptures, and it was, it was a very funny, it is a very funny sculpture. Actually, just recently, the Rijksmuseum took it as one of the iconic images of the 60s. Um, then I continue with uh, very positive uh, images about maternity, and this is uh, a wonderful drawing by an artist, uh, the Dutch artist Kinke Kooi. She's actually present here, she's sitting there, and um, it's called Crying Baby, and she made this work um, uh, during her, uh, after she gave birth to her first uh, child, and um, she took this significant moment that when the child cries and you breastfeed, then your breast starts to leak. And nobody had ever told her that before, that this phenomenon would happen. And she was just so incredible, um, uh, impressed by it. She, she made a drawing uh, out of it. Um, this is by uh, Thai artist Pinari uh, Sanpitak. Who, who made these sculptures in our museum garden during female power. And as you can see, she took the, 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 the breast form, but for her it's not only the breast form, but also the top of a religious building in Thailand, the stupa, that is uh, really similar to a breast form, which is quite significant. Uh, another artist that has, of course, uh, contributed to the whole discussion on how motherhood is being represented, it's Catherine Opie, self-portrait nursing, where she gives her son uh, uh, bre the breast, it's from 2004, and the way she has carved, you can not very well see it, but she has carved pervert on her 
breast. And then, of course, she has a tattoo, which is totally different from the so-called idealistic images of the, of the good mother in our West European society. The same is for Magie Geerling. She's a Dutch artist where she uh, portrayed an older woman and then having a baby uh, to the breast, all dealing with issues that are far away from these uh, regular representations of so-called idealized motherhood. Um, former speakers have, of course, mentioned Mary Kelly's very important project where she dealt from a day-to-day -day basis on, uh, say, the development uh, of her son, not only on the development of her son, but also about the separation between her and her son, because that is really what this project is about, in my opinion, that you that uh, being a mother means at the same time that you are that you learn yourself to separate from the other, from your child. The next slide is from uh, Turkish artist Kanan Senol. She made a video also after uh, she gave birth. And the video shows how the milk is dripping from the breast. And I can advise you to look up at internet what is being said at internet about this breast or milk leaking breast. It's quite remarkable. You know what it says? It says this breast reminds us of the fountain of Marcel Duchamp. And it reminds us of Bruce Nauman's fountain. And this is so funny that, you know, I think we have so much things to research, and this is just one of them. Um, it strikes me as totally uh, weird. But anyway, just to show you how things are being represented, I really want to show you also this work by Renée Kohl. She's a Dutch artist. She did a project, um, it called Fathers and Babies. It was at an opening of an exhibition. And at the beginning of the 90s, I do remember very well, um, it was not very common for women artists to have a baby. It was really, uh, um, it was really, uh, uh, how do you say, uh, when I would go at, have studio visits and talk with young women artists about it, they would say, you know, I, I chose, I've chosen not to become a mother because that will interfere with my artist work. And then I would say, uh, especially after I had my own son, I would say, you know, well, maybe you should rethink it, you know. I didn't want to bother them too much, but I thought, you know, what's going to happen? Your art might not, be, you might not be successful, and then in the end you might have nothing. I didn't say that aloud, of course. But um, um, there was a very strong tendency at art academies, it still is, by the way, in art criticism, in the art world, that once you be become a mother, you know, you can forget it about your artistic career. So many women, young women artists would not take uh, uh, or would never bring a baby to an opening, for example, let alone the opening times, you see. At five, an opening means you never can bring anything. You cannot attend with a young child at home at opening at five o'clock because five o'clock at six o'clock is like uh, prime time uh, in, in, in any household because you have to cook and eat. And at least in Dutch schedules. I don't know whether that's in America the same. Anyway, but this Rene Cole decided, you know, what she noticed was that many young uh, male artists would bring their babies as an attribute, as uh, showing how progressive they were. So what she did at an opening, she asked 50 young fathers to bring their babies along. And it was like incredible. She wanted, she also had put a washing table in the gallery room and she had sprayed some lovely baby powder, but it was all ruined because all these fathers started to smoke. You know, this was, this was the time that it was not forbidden yet to smoke in, in rooms, you see, and it was not forbidden to smoke in neighbor, in, uh, close to your baby either. Um, then I would like to conclude with some, um, uh, some other initiatives that really, for me, show that the shift of paradigm has happened. And this is, of course, a project by Linka Clayton. Uh, my colleague already mentioned Linka's work. And uh, this is an artist statement. She did an uh, artist residency in motherhood after she 
became a mother, she discovered that, you know, it was impossible to go anywhere. So she decided to have at her home an artist residency in motherhood. And, um, and then she would uh, make artworks like this. Uh, 63 objects taken from my son's mouth. She would put it really uh, in, in, in a square. Another example of, um, uh, or, I mean, this is uh, something I took from, from the internet where she uh, is having then also a show uh, where she would show all the things that she made during this so-called uh, residency at her home, of course. Then I would like to conclude with the, uh, an artist from Venezuela. I just met her at the Venice Biennial, Argelia Bravo, and she did a performance with three, three mothers, uh, masked, uh, climbing up the stage and breastfeeding their babies, meanwhile singing the national anthem, how do you call it? An, an, Anthem, national anthem of Venezuela. Actually, the, this national anthem is being based on a sing you sing when you uh, bring your child to, to bed. A child, lullaby. how do you call it? A lullaby. A lullaby, yeah, a, a, a lullaby. And uh, for her, this was um, a, 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 a critiquing the way Monsanto, Monsanto is an a international firm uh, mainly based in the United States, that really uh, dominates the world of uh, uh, seeds and is uh, dominating in that sense that um, uh, is also uh, not only, uh, say, the natural uh, breeding of seeds, but also the way uh, firms like Nestle uh, promote uh, to use uh, uh, milk powder instead of the uh, natural uh, breasts. So this was for her, for her um, uh, uh, a political uh, critique on the way uh, international firms are taking over, um, uh, how do you say that? Um, natural resources. Natural resources, <laughs> yes, thank you. So this, uh, I want to conclude with that. Of course, there's a lot more to say, but... Um, I want to thank you very much, and I love, love to share with you uh, and to have, if you would like to have a look at this female ca uh, power catalog in which I discussed uh, the goddesses and the great mothers and matriarchy. And I have an English uh, translation of that uh, 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 catalog that I can send around to anyone who, who would like to receive it. Thank you so much. Thank you.